Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the four position battery switch from pontoonstuff.com. This is one security measure to make sure that you're not stuck out on the water with a dead battery or stuck on the shore with a dead battery. I hear that train is coming. It's coming around. More than one way to skin the cat. Can you say that anymore? If you are currently running your outboard, maybe that's hooked on your battery, and your accessory harness, your electrical for all of your lights and everything else, maybe that's all directly to your battery, we're kind of just asking for a potential disaster with having a dead battery. When we go to turn the key to get home, maybe you're out on the water or anchored, maybe you're trying to leave for the day and you forgot to turn one of your switches off, on your boat and you left your LEDs on for a week or two and now your battery's dead, this battery switch is a way to prevent that. This is more than just your typical on off switch. We'll do a video on that as well. This is a four position switch. So if you're running a lot of lights like this setup has here, we've literally got every light you could want on your boat with LEDs. And then maybe on top of that, you've got a stereo, maybe even an upgraded stereo with an amplifier you really should be running a second battery. So we would have a starting battery and a house battery or a deep cycle battery. And that way we're not gonna have a problem with our starting battery being dead when it's time to go home or just to get out on the water. Come on in here. This four position battery switch, we have to remember, it gives us a, a reminder, stop engine before switching to the off position. I like to tell folks, just stop the engine before you turn it to any of the settings. So when I have this set to battery one, that is going to be pulling draw and pushing charge to battery one exclusively. When I turn it to battery two, typically this would be the house battery and number one would be your starting battery. Now I'm pulling draw and pushing charge to just battery two. When I switch to both, what I'm essentially doing is putting my batteries in parallel to where I'm drawing from both and I'm pushing charge to both. Technically with this switch, because it's protected at your ignition, you could start it on one and then change to both. But again, human error, I like to just start it on both and keep it on both. Basically anytime I'm running the boat, if I'm ever docked, anchored, beached, and I'm playing the stereo or have lights on, that's when I'm gonna switch it to two, the engine is off, and now I can drain down that house battery, worst case, and then when I need to go home, even if that battery is completely dead, I could switch to both or one, and now I can still start my motor. That's where this is your security system for not killing your starting battery. When I'm all done at the end of the day, or I'm trailering home, I change it to off after the motor is turned off, and now I have no power going out to my motor or accessories. The back side of this is gonna have three posts. So we have, they call this a feeder. Sometimes you'll see it called a shared, a common. That's all the same. This is battery one and this is battery two. Let's show you how to hook this up to run your two batteries on this four position switch. With the switch, it's gonna come as a kit. You're gonna have a negative bus bar or bus block, negative block, shared negative, shared ground, common ground, whatever you wanna call it. And then you've got your positive wires and your ground wires. These are heavy gauge. We need to keep that flow of juice going strong to and from the switch. You can shop for this four position battery switch, a standard on off switch or an entire boat's worth of flooring and furniture at pontoonstuff.com. Use Tom's Tunes, one word, at checkout to save 5%. Saves you money. Gives us a little kickback for the time we spend putting all this furniture together, these electrical videos together, for you to make your project go smoother. I'm going to start with these two heavy gauge red wires. These are going to be the positive wires or the power wires running to our switch. So what I'm going to do, I've already labeled them. Battery one, that's my starting battery. 
battery two, that's my house battery. I'm gonna go ahead and set those ends aside. They'll eventually hook to the battery. I'm gonna take the opposite end on the back side of the switch here. These are 11 sixteenths nuts with a lock washer. We're gonna go ahead and pull all of those off. And then I'm gonna track down my battery cable one. So one is right here. And on the switch, I have a battery one post. I'm gonna run this in, orienting that terminal in with this part of it, the raised part up. If I slide that on, it's the only thing that goes on battery one post. And we'll tighten that snug with a wrench. Just trying to crush that lock washer down. And then I'm gonna take the other wire that goes to my house battery or battery two, that's gonna go on the battery two post in the middle. What's really nice about the switch is all of these openings that allow me to have clean wires instead of them being really close together or even touching. I've got lots of space here. So we're gonna go ahead. That's the only wire that goes on the battery two post, my house battery post. And then my feeder post, again, often referred to as a common or shared post. This is where all of my accessories, my motor, they're all, the positives are all gonna hook here. And that way, when I turn the switch, what the switch is doing is taking power from battery one and applying it to the feeder post or my accessories and engine. When I turn it to two, it's taking only battery two, power from battery two, supplying it to the feeder. When it's on both, it's taking batteries one and two in parallel, so still 12 volts, but it's supplying both of them together to the feeder post. And likewise, that power coming back in from the engine for charging purposes is gonna go to whichever battery we've selected or both. Hope that makes sense. I think that's the simplest I could say it. So I'm gonna go ahead. This is representing my outboard battery cables or, or inboard battery cables, engine cables. I'm gonna put just the positive on and I'm always gonna put that on first because I don't want anything interrupting or causing any drop in power coming to my engine. I have my accessory harness, my positive, that's gonna go on second. And if you had anything else, maybe you've got that upgraded stereo, your amplifier is gonna take pretty heavy gauge wire, draws a lot of power, I would put that on after my engine cable. But it's only your positive wires coming on here because this is gonna supply power from our positive post on the battery out to our accessories and engine. Get that snug down nice and tight. And then we're gonna move over to our negative, our bus block. You've probably seen, if you've watched my other videos, you've seen me just omit this and hook up my grounds for my engine, my stereo, my accessories. I could just hook those to one of my batteries and then I would link the grounds of the batteries together. That's one way to do it, but I think this is a pretty darn clean solution, having this bus bar, bus block, for my negatives to go to. So with this done, let's go ahead and just install it into the deck here so it's out of the way. I'm just gonna put one screw in for now. And I like to put, if I'm installing this on railings, I like to put a piece of marine plastic behind it, something just to protect from those ever arcing or put it into a seat base. The plastic won't conduct the electricity. You'll be fine that way too. I'm gonna take one of those big ground wires that comes with the switch, and we have a larger hole in one versus the other. We're gonna take the smaller hole. The smaller is gonna go over the bus bar. And then on this same bus bar, since it's going to my starting battery, I'm gonna run from my battery cables for the motor, I'm gonna run that ground on top of that post. They're both big, heavy gauge wires. I'm not too worried about power or the connection dropping at all there. So you could stack them either way, but I've got the battery cable coming first, then the engine cable. Snug that down with a half inch socket. And then I can connect the other side of this to my starting battery. Always tighten with a wrench on your battery as well. 
snug it down. If you have wing nuts, I highly recommend replacing them with a standard stainless nut, or at very worst, use a wrench to tighten those wing nuts down. For our other battery, our house battery, we're gonna do the same thing with that black cable. I'm gonna take the smaller diameter hole, set that on the other post on the other end of the, the bus bar. And what this is doing is connecting the grounds of both batteries. That's all you need to know. That's how we put them in parallel. That's how the system works. I'm gonna take my ground for my electrical accessories, my lighting, my horn, all of that stuff that runs to the dash. That's gonna go on top and then I'm gonna tighten this down. You could put a stereo on either one. It doesn't technically matter, but I always like to put the ignition cable on the same ground as my starting battery. Essentially, both grounds are connected, but it's just the way I do it. More than one way to skin the cat. Can you say that anymore? More than one way to get it done, but this is the way I like to do it. I'm gonna take now that larger diameter hole that's gonna go on the ground post, the negative post of my house battery. I'm gonna tighten that down. And all that's left is to hook up my positive wires, my positives. I will say this very important. You should never combine batteries of different types. So meaning these are lead acid batteries, just a standard battery, you can get it any uh, hardware or automotive, Walmart, you can get them at marinas. These are just straightforward lead acid batteries. They can go just fine together, a starting and a deep cycle, that's fine. I'm never going to combine these with a AGM, absorbed glass mat, or a lithium. I'm only ever going to pair together batteries of the same type, meaning two lithiums, two AGMs, two lead acids. I'm never going to mix them. Can't stress that enough. I'm not even sure what exactly would happen, but from what I've researched, it would be really, really bad. Anyhow, I've got right here my number two, so my house battery. We're gonna run that to my house battery right here on the positive post. And number one to the starting battery. I hear the train coming. cover these positive posts right up. And what we've done now is we've run power to our switch. We've run our grounds from the battery to the bus bar, which is linking the two grounds. Now, when I go to my switch, it's in the off position to start. If I turn it to battery one, I'm now only pulling draw from my starting battery or my number one. So all my accessories that are on here, we can run those off battery one. If I wanna switch it to two, now I'm only pulling juice from my house battery. Same thing if I'm sitting out, I've got my lights on, I've got the stereo playing, then I could use number two and use my house battery. If I go to both, I'm pulling power from both batteries to those accessories. One big thing, this has been a question I've had in the past. This switch does not dictate what accessories or your motor or anything else get power. All this switch does is decides which of these two batteries is supplying the power or receiving the charge to the switch or from the switch. So again, this doesn't dictate if my switch panel gets power versus my outboard versus my stereo or anything else connected. It only decides which of these batteries or both together are supplying power and receiving charge. The reason that is is all this switch knows is that there's power to the one battery one post and battery two post and all the switch can do is take power from one two or both and supply it to my outboard or inboard engine starting cables battery cables or my accessories going out that's all this switch knows how to do so that's just one big important thing to understand how the switch works the beauty of it is when I'm done with my boat for the day, I still have that off position at the bottom that I can switch to. And then I have zero draw or even potential draw from my accessories or my motor or anything. I've killed power out to the boat so my batteries aren't gonna wear down as long as they're a good, healthy battery. One really important thing, and it's labeled right here on the switch, stop engine before switching to the off position. 
So if we turn this to off position with the engine running, most outboards are still power coming from the engine to charge your batteries or keep them charged. If I turn it off, that power has to go somewhere. It's gonna do damage to your motor. Never change it. What I tell my customers and the, the rule that I live by is I don't even change it from one to both or two when the engine's running. The reason being, what if I accidentally not paying attention, had a couple too many margaritas, and I wanna go to two from one, and I go the wrong direction through off, now I might have fried something on the outboard side. There's human error involved, let's just turn the motor off, then we can switch to which battery we wanna be using. Lastly, the way that I use this switch, when I turn it on, if I'm going out on my boat and I'm gonna go for a cruise, and I'm gonna be playing music and lights, but the engine's gonna be running the whole time, I immediately change it to both. There's more than one way to run the switch. This is how I do it on my own boat. So that's how I'm gonna teach you here. That way I am pulling power to start from the starting and the deep cycle. They're in parallel, that's okay. But I'm gonna keep pushing some charge to both batteries as we're boating, tubing, cruising, putzing, whatever. So I can keep my batteries nice and topped off. If we stop, we anchor, we beach, we tie off with another boat, and I keep my stereo booming, I've got lights on at night, then I'm gonna change it, after I've turned my motor off, to battery two. That way, only my deep cycle, my house battery, is supplying power to those accessories. Cool part about that is, and this is where this is, that extra measure of security to not have a dead battery at the end of the day. If I'm ready to leave, even if my house battery is dead, completely dead, I can change this to both or even just one. Then I can start my motor. My, my starting battery hasn't been used for any of those accessories the whole time. If you change it to both, they're in parallel. You should still have enough juice from your starting battery to get that motor started. If you wanna play it super safe, just change it just to number one and you'll start from your starting battery. That is installation and use of this battery switch. Hope this helps in your project. If you're gonna run two batteries, you want that safety measure of not leaving yourself stranded after a long day out on the water, running accessories, this is the switch for you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.